So we've begun to make our way in pancreas cancer. So for a long, long time, we had nothing, right? We had a couple of drugs. They didn't work very well. We didn't know anything about the molecular profile of the disease. And fortunately, over the last three to five, six years, what we've seen is improvement in therapies, new drugs being approved, survival being extended. But in the same time, we're learning more about the molecular characterization of the disease. We've uncovered the importance around BRCA. We are studying the stromal impact, uh, the fibrosis that occurs with pancreas cancer. And so those things are giving us new targets to aim at and new therapies to come forward. We've learned and gotten better at surgical techniques. So more and more patients are having surgery. Our adjuvant therapy has improved. So on all fronts, we're beginning to make headway in this really difficult disease. It's been long realized that the tumor microenvironment plays an important role in the biology of cancer. Many years ago, uh, physicians and surgeons understood that even though there were a very small number of cancer cells in a pancreatic tumor, there was a lot of other things in that tumor, um, which is re uh, referred to as the tumor stroma. So recent advances um, involve what the role of the, the tumor stroma actually plays in the biology. We used to think that the stroma acted like a barrier or a wall to prevent chemotherapy drugs and the immune system from attacking the cancer cell. But more recently, research um, has uncovered that it's a much more complicated picture so in, 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 uh, in addition to just uh, preventing cancer cells from being attacked, the stroma also acts as a barrier that the human body puts up to try to prevent the cancer cells from spreading. So while that has important biological implications, it also has implications for therapeutics. So um, increasingly, we're trying to target those aspects of the tumor stroma, which can augment our ability to attack the cancer um, while not trying to impede those parts of the stroma um, which are important for keeping the cancer in check. Many years ago, there was a drug targeting one of these important pathways that we initially thought would help um, deplete the stroma and allow chemotherapy to work better. In point of fact, when the clinical trials were developed uh, targeting this pathway, which was called the smoothen pathway, the hedgehog pathway, these drugs did not seem to actually have that intended effect and may, in fact, have been potentiating the opposite, allowing the cancer to escape. So that's one of the, one of the important parts of the tumor microenvironment um, that we're beginning to understand. Another part is the immune system. So immune cells that are present in the tumor microenvironment, we're beginning to understand that there are um, cells like myeloid cells, um, cells, uh, for example, the tumor macrophages, tumor-associated macrophages, and monocytes. And their presence in the tumor microenvironment um, suppress the immune response. So again, the therapeutic implication is that if we can target those cells and attack those cells, we may allow a more uh, robust immune response against the cancer. And then finally, the T cells themselves. So this is a really interesting and important um, uh, cell type that's being targeted in cancer, in other cancer cells, uh, in other cancer types. It's been effectively used um, using checkpoint inhibitors to activate T cells. Um, that approach remains uh, unfulfilled in pancreatic cancer. And so further research needs to be done to really understand why that is and to more effectively target those T cells. Pancreatic cancer uh, incidence is on the rise, and in fact, the mortality is on the rise too, and we're expecting in the next 10, 20 years to be the second uh, killer cancer in man. Uh, to talk more about it, I would like to focus uh, today on the pancreatic adenocarcinoma, which constitutes 95% of the pancreatic cancers. It's a very important always, always to get uh, tissue, and I tell my patients, because there is a chance that maybe it's a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. Not all malignancies arising from uh, the pancreas are pancreatic adenocarcinoma or the cancers of the duct. Challenges exist there, but you know, it's uh, mainly diagnostics, recognizing if a case is resectable or borderline resectable, and this is very crucial to carve out these cases 
from the rest of the cases where the disease is locally advanced or the disease is already metastatic or became metastatic since the last staging. These really are important and I reiterate to patients and it's important to discuss with the physician, are we still at that stage? Another very important piece early on when we see the pancreatic cancer patients to address the complex symptoms that have. It's not just about the cancer, it's the pain, the biliary obstruction, patients are jaundiced, often risk of infection, malabsorption, almost every pancreatic cancer patient, whether it has been operated on or not, has a malabsorption. So aggressive symptom control to the patients is very crucial from day one. This is not just palliative care at the end. And last but not least, another piece of information I share to patients, it's very important to obtain a comprehensive family history. There are certain entities of uh, familiar predisposition to pancreatic cancer, whether it's hereditary breast ovarian cancer syndrome, Lynch syndrome, and uh, other entities, Lefromini syndromes, etc. Genetic counseling may be warranted in certain cases if the patients are very young and or if there is fa family history pointing to that.